Hey guys. So this series is going to be a beginner course that documents my progress through uh, programming fragment shaders. I'll be leaning heavily on the book Book of Shaders by Patricio Gonzalez Vivo and Jen Lo. There is a link in the description. I won't be going over every single example in the book, just the ones that I think are important. And you also won't need a you won't need a strong math background to understand this uh, this series. I'll be doing my best to explain w what's going on behind the scenes. That's kind of the that's kind of the point of this series. So if you see any value in this series and you want to feel like uh, donating, please donate to those two. There's a link or a donation button on the page of their uh, their book. It's all in the description. So with that said, this first video is just going to tackle what OpenGL programming is as a concept. And so what is OpenGL shader programming? Well, simply put, we are writing programs that draw pretty graphics on screen. Now we write those programs in a language called GLSL. And that stands for Graphics Library Shader Language. It's a programming language based on C syntax. So if you're familiar with C or C++, you should be uh, you should feel right at home. OpenGL. What is OpenGL? OpenGL is an actual thing. It's not a it's not a program. It's not a piece of graphics. It's not a physical thing. It's actually a set of rules or a specification that tells uh, manufacturers of graphics cards how they should go about creating their APIs for developers to use. So each manufacturer of a graphics card, AMD, NVIDIA, they create these things called APIs for developers. What's an API? An API is a set of tools that developers use to develop programs. And so an analogy would be Say you were at a uh, say you're at a restaurant. Now the chef has a whole bunch of tools. The chef has a chef knife or knives, and they use these tools to create a dish. You consume the dish, but you never interact with the chef's knives or the tools of the chef. And so similarly, graphics card manufacturers create these tools for developers to use to display graphics on screen. The end user sees the graphics, but they never actually interact with the tools used to make the graphics. And so that's all an API or uh, an API is a set of tools used or created specifically for the developer, not the end user. So GLSL is a language we use to write programs that run on graphics cards. Now these programs are called shaders. That's where shaders comes from. That's a bit unfortunate in that. When people see the word shader, they think lighting and color. Shaders are not simply lighting and color. They also deal with geometry. They also deal with drawing shapes on screen. So just understand that a program written and executed on a graphics card is called a shader, whether or not it, it colors in the screen or colors in an object. Now, there are two main types of shaders. There are vertex shaders and there are fragment or pixel shaders. So let's tackle the first one first. What is a vertex shader? Well, a vertex shader is a program we write for the GPU where we tell or we give the GPU three coordinates, three points in space, three vertices. It connects these point points, excuse me, it connects the dots, and it creates a triangle. Now, why does your GPU render triangles? Well, the triangle is the most basic geometric shape, right? That's a line. That's two lines. Once we close it off, we create a shape, the most basic shape being a triangle. And so with the triangle, we can render or get a square. We can go in three dimensions and get a cube. And with squares, we can even create the illusion of a circle. And so if you zoom up on uh, curves in your video games, you'll find out that they're not actually curved, right? They're just pixels. They're just squares. And what are squares? Well, they're just triangles. All a vertex shader does is it renders 2D and 3D objects to the screen. Now the cool thing about a vertex shader programming is that we can uh, manipulate or transform these objects. We can uh, rotate them, we can stretch them, contract them, we can skew them, we can translate or slide them through space. The mathematics that powers graphics programming is the mathematics of linear algebra. Now I know I said in the beginning of this video that we were not going to go math heavy, and we're not. But if you're like me, you kind of need to know or want to know in algebra 
or ha want to have a general understanding of how things are working underneath the hood so you're not just using other people's code or algorithms. So very quickly, what is linear algebra? Well, what is algebra? We have algebra one, we have algebra two, we have linear algebra, what is algebra? Algebra, we could say, is just a mathematical toolbox. And so it's a toolbox used, a toolbox full of tools that we use to manipulate mathematical things. And those mathematical things are linear mathematical things. And so what the hell does linear mean? Well, linear refers to math problems or math objects dealing with lines. Now, the way I like to think about linear algebra is not really lines. I like to think about it the way I think about a vertex shader. And so a vertex shader doesn't know what a square is. It doesn't know what a circle is. It doesn't know what a cube is. All the vertex shader or your GPU knows is what a triangle is. And so it takes this one basic unit and with that basic unit, it constructs more complex objects. And so though linear algebra deals with lines, I like to think of it as dealing with points in space. And so what is a line? Well, a line is two different points, right? Two distinct points, a range, so caps, two ends. And then it's all of the infinite number of points in between those two points. If we keep going, we get a line, or technically a line segment. Technically, a line goes off in each, uh, in each direction infinitely. A line segment has these two caps. And so linear algebra uh, is just a specific set of mathematical tools used for manipulating points in space. And so we have two ends, two points, the infinite number of points in between those two points, that creates a line. So we got one line, we got two lines, we got three lines, what do we have? We have a triangle. Now we're in business, right? Because now with a triangle, we have a square. With a square, we have a cube. With a square, we also have curved surfaces. So to sum it up, in graphics programming, what is a vertex shader? Well, it's a, a program that allows us to render and manipulate points or lines or surfaces in space or in dimensions. Now, the second type of uh, shader, the fragment shader, is a lot easier to understand. The fragment shader or the pixel shader well, all that does is it rasterizes objects. Now, what does that mean? Well, the vertex shader draws the object on the screen. It then passes that information to our fragment shader. Our fragment shader understands the boundaries of the object, and our fragment shader colors in the object. And so all a fragment shader or a pixel shader does is it colors in things. Oh, let's zoom back in there. Mm move this a bit and so in this course we'll be dealing with of course fragment shaders right we'll be using the book of shaders as our guide so we're going to be dealing with fragment shaders we'll be dealing with our using book of shaders as our guide and when we need to i promise it won't be math heavy but when we need to we need to tackle the linear algebra involved in in the uh, in the topic of the day or the topic of the video if you're serious about programming graphics, you gotta bite that bullet, guys. You gotta learn your math. I know it kinda sucks, but you gotta do it. You don't need it for this course, but if you're serious, like you gotta you gotta learn your math, guys. And so in the next video, what are we gonna be talking about? So we have a general idea of what a vertex shader is, what a fragment shader is, what shader programming is. Where do we do this? Like where are we gonna write where do we type on our keyboard like what environment are we going to run these shaders in where is it going to render how is it going to render so in the next video we're going to be tackling our glsl workspace we're going to take a look at how it's set up what it gives us what it doesn't give us how do we interact with it so all of that stuff in the next video and i will see you guys in the next one